huddled along the small of the back. There's an abrasion of one knee consistent with a fall. Finally, a spike has been driven through both feet and blood leaked from those areas and has stained the cloth. The evidence of a scourged man who was crucified and who died of postural asphyxia and cardiopulmonary failure is clear cut. Now when looking at the shroud and looking at the forensic evidence that we see, we know that a man was taken down from the position of crucifixion, placed on one end of a long cloth, and the other end was placed over his body. And we know this because there was moist blood, blood clots that were still on the body, and that blood soaked into the cloth. And that information tells us that this man died in the position of crucifixion. Furthermore, we see evidence of a tremendous beating a scourging. This man was flogged very, very badly. Now from all this material, from all this forensic evidence that we see here in the shroud, we see that this man who is buried in this cloth died in the exact same manner that Jesus died. The question is, is this Jesus? Is the image in the shroud the image of Jesus himself? To find the answer, we must ask yet another key question. How did the image come to be there in the first place? The answer is really nobody knows. I mean, the image is inexplicable. Um, we, we, after thousands and thousands of hours of investigation using all kinds of, 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 uh, of highly technical gear, we still do not understand uh, why or how this image came to be. The shroud image is made from tiny fibers that are one-tenth the size of human hair. And the picture elements are actually randomly distributed like the dots in your newspaper photograph or magazine photograph. To do this, you would need an incredibly accurate atomic laser. This technology does not exist. In spite of the fact that the latest and most powerful technologies have been brought to bear on the problem, science has been unable to explain the origin of the image in the shroud. Yet that has not prevented researchers from making some truly revolutionary discoveries. After years of studying the shroud, Dame Isabel Pitzik, a particle physicist, believes the shroud has brought science to the threshold of a whole new understanding of physics. While dealing with the position of the body within the cloth, she discovered one of those mysterious properties that cannot be yet somehow is an interface that divides the image transport into two hermetically separate yet simultaneous actions and forces causing the shroud to be taut and parallel on both sides creating a true event horizon in general relativity we have found that there are certain things called black holes now the surface of a black hole is called an event horizon and it's called that because right at that surface, right at that surface, the laws of physics seem to change character drastically. When you look at the image of this rod, the two bodies next to each other, you feel that it's a flat image. But if you create, for instance, a three-dimensional object as I did, the real body, then you realize that the there is a strange dividing element, an interface, from which the image is projected up and the image is projected down. The muscles of the body are absolutely not crushed against the, the, the stone of the tomb. They are perfect. It means that the body is hovering between the two sides of the shroud. What does that mean? That there is absolutely no gravity. Other strange things you discover that the, the image is absolutely undistorted. Now if you imagine that the cloth was wrinkled, tied, wrapped around the body and all of a sudden you see a perfect image which is impossible unless the shroud was made absolutely taut, rigidly taut. 
everybody thinks that the tomb signifies death. Not at all, the exact opposite. The shroud and the tomb signifies an unbelievable beginning. We have nothing less in the tomb of Christ than the beginning of a new universe. For centuries, the shroud has been viewed and analyzed as a record of a death, the end of the physical being. But Isabel Pitzik is suggesting that it is in fact just the opposite. A record not of an ending, but a beginning, which would suggest resurrection in its truest sense.